Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode six of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. I'm your host, Pasquale Barry, and I'm joined with my co-host, Andy Moyen. How's it going, Andy? All right, how are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> so um, for today's uh, fan profile episode, we would like you to meet Rella Brown. How's it going, Rella? Good, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Good. So I know that um, you know there's a certain amount of celebrity that comes with being um, a KISS fan. And I remember you, I think it was back in KISS Cruise 4, I was following your adventures on Facebook. And, um, and then I saw you on, on the KISS Cruise and I go, oh my God, that's Rella, I have to meet her. And that's when I met you um, for the first time. Um, Andy, do you remember meeting Rella? Uh, I think it, it had to be on the cruise. Yeah. That's, well, that's we talked some, I think, on Facebook, but I think I actually met you through Melissa. So. Yeah, that's what I, well, th that's what I mean about meeting. Meeting yeah. people face-to-face -face is what I call the meeting. Give me right. anybody online, but meeting face-to-face, -face, it was definitely on a cruise. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, we come across so many KISS fans back and forth. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to keep track. But, Raula, you were definitely a, a memorable one, I got to tell you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to the uh, KISS Army Nation podcast. Um, so, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Rella Brown? Um, I am a mom of a 16-year-old. Um, I work for a dental office here in town. I do um, insurance. I coordinate finances and insurance and file a lot of uh, Medicaid plan plans um, for our patients. Um, I paint and I write a little bit from time to time. I've done a few um, uh, album reviews for a online music magazine, which is a lot harder than it seems. Um, but, um, that's that's about it. I, I work out a lot and I'm a big Kiss fan, of course. You and uh, Melissa uh, did did uh, one of those uh, or a couple of those, uh, what do you call them things? My <sighs> I, yeah, yes. like a, but yeah, they got different names for them, but all these yeah. big things for the day. You guys like dress. You got you guys painted your face and kind of like dressed up a little bit to do the whole thing. Yeah, we <laughs> that um, must have been. We, we put face face paint on and um, we ran the obstacle courses. It was pretty cool. We had a lot of fun. Haven't done it in a few years. I think at one point I did like five or six a year for probably about three or four years, and then that was it. We often hear that, you know, back in the 70s, how difficult it was being a KISS fan. Do you find it difficult being a KISS fan? Um, then it was because my father was a, a big, um, I won't really say a KISS hater, but he was one of the one of the parents who said that Gene Simmons was the devil and you're not listening to that music. And, you know, so I had to listen to KISS music at my grandfather's house. Um, he had a stepdaughter who um, was a big Kiss fan, and she and her boyfriend would dress up and go to all the concerts. And we, you know, um, I I pretty much lived vicariously through them and listened to all their, I mean, all their albums and looked at their magazines. And you know, that was that was how I got into the band. And I think when um, when Phantom of the Park came out, my dad said, "You can watch it," and I'm like. Oh my God, it's a sky falling. You know, he let me watch it and I thought that was just the greatest thing. So I think that was probably the first time that I actually saw them perform, so to speak, um, in a concert type setting was on TV. And of course, you know, we'd, I'd watch them at my grandfather's house, you know, when they were on bandstand. And um, I think they did, um, uh, I don't remember what was that show at night, midnight special show. But, they were on that i think once so so yeah that was that was the only time i got to see kiss was my grandma's so fond memories there i think I, you know what i think it's kind of strange though that your dad your parents let you watch kiss meets the phantom on tv okay yeah. it, it's just yeah. weird because they you know they took you know they did you know they made up the words for, right. know, said, oh, right. said, rip rip and destroy right um my dad was my dad was quite a character he was um uh um 
a lot of contradictions. You know, one day he would say no, and the next day he would say yes. But Kiss, he was pretty adamant about Kiss. But that's why I was so shocked when he said you can watch the Phantom, and I'm like, you know. So, um, <clears throat> but the same dad let me have Ozzy albums in high school. So, you know, what inspired you to become a Kiss fan? Um, they were just so different, and I think. Um, when I was younger, my aunt um, liked was a big Alice Cooper fan, so I wasn't I wasn't estranged to kind of the theatrical type shock rock. So when I you know saw all the you know saw in the magazines the fire and the blood and all that stuff, that's kind of what you know. I'm not a typical female. It wasn't Paul Stanley that drew me in, <laughs> an ace. So, I mean, that was, that was why, basically. And they were different, and they were unique, and there was just something about them. It, it's hard to explain. I got one for you. You are the first woman that we have on this podcast. In, oh, uh, in this, and not only that is that I told Pass when we first started this, man, we have to get some women on this because it just seems that the, you know, the guys just, like – it's all about the guys. It's all about the guys. And it's not all about just guys. There are a lot of women KISS fans out there. And I always like to get, what do the women think about when they hear stuff like, oh, it's just the guys. Oh, did, did your boyfriend get you into it? Or your husband get you into it? That kind of stuff. It, you know, because it drives Kim crazy when people go, kind of go, oh, man. So so when did Andy get Andy made you a KISS fan? I never like say I never made Kim a Kiss fan. Kim's actually older than I am, and she's got tattoos. You know, she's got a couple of tattoos, but she's got one of Kiss on her. I don't even have a Kiss tattoo. I don't have any tattoos actually. So there's it is an in bit on me. I just never got any tattoos. So, anyways, how's it feel to be a woman being a fan? You know what I mean? T tell us about that. That's got to be. <laughs> That's a really hard question. Um... I think a lot of people, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of a lot of women, you know, first get into Kiss because of Paul, you know, because he's got that little sassy thing going on, and and I think a lot of women are drawn to that. But that's not, like I said, that's not me. That's not why I was drawn to it. I think I was drawn to it because of the darker side of the band. Um, but. I don't, that's really a hard question. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I have a lot of people that walk up to me. It's like, you know, and, and you're right. It's a, it's a, it's a wow factor. I know when um, Peter was in New York at, at his book signing, I flew to New York for the day. I mean, airline was cheap. I flew to New York for the day. I stood in line and there are guys everywhere and they're like so you're really a fan and i'm like yeah and they're, they're like well where are you from and i'm like i flew in for the day and they're like wow really you know so i mean i think it, it shocks a lot of people you know um at the i know at the dental office um i manage our facebook page on the dental office and every once in a blue moon the kiss stuff spills into the dental office wet, you know, Facebook page. And it's okay. You know, all the patients know and they always ask me questions. So if you've been on the cruise, when are you going on the cruise again? You know, <laughs> it's kind of exciting. But um I don't know, Andy. I mean it's it's you're right. I mean it it is a mostly a all men thing, but in that respect, isn't all metal music kind of like, well girls don't like metal music. I mean I mean, it's it's kind of like that. It's like a stereotype, and not all women are that way. So, do you feel that uh, Kiss changed your life somehow? Um, in the respect that I have met a lot of interesting people, I've met a lot of awesome friends, and um, I've gone to places that I probably would have never, you know, I've, I've been to a few of the places that we went on the cruise, but... Um, it, they kind of helped me step out of the box a little bit because I was more, a little bit more of a reserved person. But, you know, all the interesting people that I've met, I mean, I feel like for once I kind of fit in with everybody. I feel like I fit in with you guys. We all have something in common. We all, And when we start talking about our stories and sharing our stories, we're, we're not all as different as we think we are. We're more alike than, than most people realize. So... <laughs> And 
you know, it's just, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm in the dental field and I've met a lot of people that are in the dental field and it's just really, it's, I just feel like I fit in and it's, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things. You so, know, as a, as a teacher, kids and even the parents associate me with KISS. You know, I have a parent teacher interview, the parents say, oh yeah, you're the KISS guy. Yes. Do, you get, do you get the same thing where people associate you with the band? Yes, yes. They were special, like I said, at the office, you know, the patients will come in and they'll ask me about the cruises and how was it and do you get to see Gene? And I mean, they're just, they, it's almost like they kind of get excited with me about it. And, um, you know, I can walk into the, um, the Jersey Mike's at, uh, in town and um, the guys in there is like, oh, it's the Kiss Girl. And whether I have a Kiss shirt on or not, they know, they know me because of that. Oh, there's the Kiss Girl, you know. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's, you know. No, you know, you know, wear kids shirts around. Everybody's like, "Oh, nice shirt! I like your shirt." You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of cool. I get that all the time because I, I wear I wear my kids shirts as much as possible. I know I wear them a lot too. <laughs> I wear them every second I can, and every time I go out somewhere, somebody says something right. all the time. Right. It doesn't matter. They're like, man, cool shirt, cool band. Whatever right. it, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if they and, and people I don't know out of nowhere come up to me out of the blue and just say come up and say man that's a cool shirt or walk by Kim and say hey man that's a cool shirt I love that shirt oh my god that band yeah da, da, da. Right. It, it's it's kind of I don't know it's kind of weird and then they see me again and they're like oh there's the guy there's you know they 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 are what is the couple or whatever it is it mm -hmm. kind of um, it's interesting at times sometimes yeah. it's good I mean a lot most of the times it's good sometimes it's got its weirdness. Because you never know what somebody's going to say to you, right? I know, get that I know. Somebody says to you. I know, and I have, I have, inevitably, I always have somebody say, oh, yeah, I love Kiss too. Let me show you my tattoos. And they start showing tattoos, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that ain't so bad. And I'm not going to show them to you. <laughs> yeah, but that that isn't so bad. It's it's the people who come up. Sometimes the people go, oh, so you like Kiss, huh? And you just kind of like, hmm, well, here it comes. Yeah. It's either going to be good. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, we do. Or sometimes they'll sometimes they'll come up to us and they say, "You you like Kiss?" And we're both standing, we're both wearing Kiss shirts in front of them, and they're going, yeah, yeah. "You you like Kiss?" Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> have you been to a concert? Yeah, quite a few. <laughs> so yeah. you know, yeah. people watching this podcast and hearing our conversation, they get it. A non-KISS fan would not. So no. what would you tell a non-KISS fan about the band to help them get it? It's really a state of being. I mean, they they have, it's not only it's their personalities, their their persona, the, you know, Gene is such a master marketer and Paul is an awesome artist. I mean, they have so many things going on outside of their Outside of their band, they're humanitarians, you know, they help people, they do so much for the Wounded Warrior Project. I mean, and to do all this pretty much sober and to be still doing what they do and doing what they love 45 years later, I mean, it's just amazing to me. And 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 that's the thing, you know, they're they're pure at heart and they're genuine in their music. And it shows. It really shows in everything they do. Yeah, I, I think about it too. Pass, you must think about that too, man. It's like, you know, I, there's been there's been like so. So I see people going nuts right now, going, "Oh my god, I haven't seen Kiss in a year." Think about it, a year. There are bands who don't tour for ten years, you yeah. know, or five years, or eight years, and then they go back on the road. <laughs> you know, uh, the band, Kiss has been constantly touring and moving and going and going, and the machine keeps rolling and rolling for. You know, for years, I think I think at one point, man, I'll have to look it up. But I think at one point, I might have gone almost three years without them touring. I think at one point, three or maybe it was almost four years before they hit the road. I was like, you know what I mean? It was like, and now with what's going on, people are going crazy just for like a year, a year and a half, or whatever's whatever's going to happen next. Kind of well, I mean, kind of what's going to happen when they're really gone? Speaking of concerts, uh, do you remember some of the concerts you've been to, Rella? Remember how many? Yeah. I don't know an exact count. Uh, I'm going to say 30 plus. You know, because <laughs> I get 
lot of the, a lot of the, you know, living at home. I didn't get to see a lot of the, um, the older concerts. I missed all that. If I could, if I could go back in time, I would, act, I would love to go and see all those. But I missed all those. And I think the first one I went to was well into adulthood, and probably um, ninety five, and then ninety seven. And the the show in ninety seven what it was at the Dean Smith Center in um, Chapel Hill, and that was that show was phenomenal. It was even better than the first one. But um, I haven't missed a lot of tours since then. How would you describe a Kiss concert? It's kind of earth moving. That's all I'm. I mean, it's with with the pyro and the um, the music and the theatrics and the blood and the you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it just, it kind of sends a shiver up your spine, you know? Well, you're just saying about shows, right? I've been to a lot of shows two right. years since I've been like five, okay? But but I missed the first five years of their touring. You don't think, I wish I could step back in the, I wish I, out of all these years, there are certain points that we all wish we could step back. Right. I wish I could step back in the, in the beginning, the real beginning Right. You know, I saw the last night of Destroy It Tour. That was my first show. But I missed all this stuff in the beginning that I loved the most. The first, you know, the early years, the first album, the second album, the third album, the, the live stuff. You know, I mean, oh, God. I, if I could step back in time, that would be that thing. You know what I mean? So yeah. everybody's got their time. I mean, past, past probably got it too, you know? But I was a lucky guy to see like the creatures tour. How many people didn't see that? A lot of people said, "Say, say they saw it, but they're lying because they didn't because they didn't sell that well and they didn't have a lot of those shows. Even like Revenge, even the Revenge tour cut short. You know that kind of thing. So I would have loved to have seen that one. Yeah. See, there is there there are points where everybody would like to jump that mm -hmm. one time. Oh, I was just the time machine. You know, I, again, it, it's you know. Or be at a certain show at a certain time and, you know, stuff like that. We're so. talking about our experiences and our connections. Um, you know, going back to a lot of the people that you've met, um, what do you think makes our connections to KISS fans so special compared to other connections we have with people? Um, I guess it's our love of the band. I mean, we, you know, with their touring, you know, with them touring for so long and being so, so consistent with the music um they develop such a fan base i think and we as a group we all feel the same way and we have such similar stories to each other you know as far as our parents or what we did when we were kids or you know things like that and i think we just all we just all feel like we fit in together we just we're just pieces of puzzle that we all fit I mean that's the only way to to describe it. It's so past. So 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 now that I I had mentioned that I would like to leap here or there for a show or two or a year or two. Where would you like to leap past? Oh boy, speaking of that, you know, my first show was 1979, the Dynasty show at the Montreal Forum, and I remember seeing the Kiss Creatures on the marquee a few years later and I did not go. I was too young, no one to take me and didn't have the money at the time. Um but that's one of my biggest regrets. I know it didn't sell well, but oh man, I wish I saw that show more than the older shows before 79 because, you know, I wasn't around then really. Um, but, you know, I got into Kiss in 76, my first show in 79. Oh, that creature show, my biggest regret. You were lucky. You were <laughs> See, it, it, it happens. It happens to all of us. You know, it's happened to all of us, you know, so it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, there's always going to be that time you want to leap forward or backwards. It doesn't matter. You know, it yeah. could be, you know, this, I know people who say, man, I miss, I missed the reunion tour. I'm like, wow. And then I'm started thinking the age, you know, you start doing the age differences and you're thinking, wow. Or people saying, wow, I saw the first time I've ever saw them was the reunion. And I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it is, it's kind of crazy, man. A band lasting this long, you know, for that long to hold on, you know, I think it's I think it's incredibly you, you see um you see a fan who just became a fan even recently and they become like super fans so quickly. So for you, Rella, do you feel that 
Um, you became a fan gradually, or is it like you just skyrocketed as a as a fan? Um, I like I said, I felt like I was kind of a closet Kiss fan because of my my parents um, when I was really young, when I was like ten, nine or ten, and um, you know, I listened when I could, you know, and got that excitement and that thrill. And in the eighties, when they took the makeup off, I was an angry fan. <laughs> I um I felt like they sold out. They sold out to glam rock and I'm like, no, this is not the kiss that I fell in love with and I'm not listening and I, I don't want to have anything to do with this era. So I turned to Ozzy and Black Sabbath and Ronnie Dio. That was my go-to go-to. Um and now I wished I had of at least listened because now it's like all that's been I'm re I'm revisiting all those all those um all those albums and all that all that time and it's just you know yeah their costumes were awful and um all the you know like everybody else they look like aerosmith and rat and poison but their music was really good um and i'm going back and re-listening to all of that you know i've been doing that over and over but I wished I had listened then um, to all of that from before. There's one thing about Kiss, you got too, that I love about that thing is that they didn't stick to the same pathway. You know, yes. they went here, there, and everywhere. Different types of music, you know, from what they called, you know, heavy metal early on. I know it's, he it's heavier, heavier metal than they are out there. Right. But, you know, they did like Parasite, you know, that, that kind of dark, hard stuff. And then they went to, this and that, you know, just regular rock, and then they did, you know, you can call it Kisco, you know what I mean? And then right. they get into kind of more of the metal thing with, like, Look It Up, you know, Animal Ice is kind of heavy, and then they mm. kind of more went into the 80s glam thing, you know, I mean, they did The Elder, I mean, come on, they've been all over the place. You know, I'm glad they kind of went all over the place. I'm glad they just didn't stick the same route. If I wanted right. to stick the same route, right? Who's one of the, who's one, I mean, a huge band, and they've survived all these years, but the one band that stuck to the same thing and it's gone basically straight ahead is ACDC. Right. Well, I mean, they kind of, like you that, said, they, that would drive me absolutely nuts. They adapted to the times and, and their music, you know, it's like you're talking about the darker stuff and I like the darker music. I mean, and I think that's why I'm going back and listening to a lot of, you know, like Carnival Souls and, and Revenge. I mean, I like those, those heavier, um, those heavier songs. Um, but they adapted so well and, and, and that may be one of the reasons why the fans have stayed with it so long and why we, we are super fans because it, it I just, some of the songs that you, I just can't get enough of some of them. It's just like, you can listen to them over and over and over and it just doesn't get old. So Rella, it's interesting. You were talking about adapting. Um, I found that the band adapted constantly with their changing music. It was the fans who didn't adapt. You know, even with Destroyer, fans weren't happy about it. Uh, Carnival Souls, fans weren't happy about it, you know? But now looking back at the music, we're, we're subjected to eclectic Kiss music. It's like so different. And we, you know, one day I'm enjoying this album, another day I'm enjoying this album. Um, I, I think that's the beauty of the band is that there's so much diversity um, to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to go on to um, collecting now. Do you consider yourself a collector or do you pick things up there every once in a while? Um, I, I started off with t-shirts. I'm a big t-shirt person. I have hordes of t-shirts. I have too, way too many t-shirts. I can't wear them all. Um, little things, guitar picks. Um, I have posters. Um, albums, guitars. Um, I want, I would like to get all the albums. I, that's something I don't have. Um, I've got a lot of CDs and I've got everything digital, but I don't have all the albums and that's something that I really want. So I'm working towards doing that. So that's on my list. Um, and I have I have a lot of signed things, so that's you know to me that's the experiences of having things signed is is kind of neat. 
Um, I have the um, the comic book, the Blood comic book, um, signed by all the original members. So that was, you know, and I can remember every meet and greet and every signature. And, and so it's, it's a lot of memories tied up in everything. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of, and I have a lot of things that people have sent me. I think I've got a lot of stickers from Andy and get, guitar picks from Andy and buttons and pins. And I save all that stuff from the cruises and keep them all together. And I want to make shadow boxes. <laughs> I just haven't gotten to it yet. It's one of those things I haven't gotten to yet. So I have projects for days that would keep me busy for years and I just haven't, you know, it's just, you know, life, you can't get everything done. You want to get done in a day or a year or a week. <laughs> Pask has been here tr trying to, you know, I've like started doing things over, trying to piece everything together. Uh, <laughs> You know, from different shows, I have pieces like scattered. I got a piece over here that should be this here. I should have this, that. I got posters like all over the place. I need a, I, you know, I need another like twenty poster frames just to put all the posters in because I'm sick of them being underneath the one of the the extra bed up here. It's driving me nuts. I said I would never do that, and now it's so I'm like trying to clean up, and it, I mean, it, it it's constantly keeps going. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the, the never ending project. I'm I'm in the process of trying to declutter my house right now and get rid of things that I don't use that I haven't used and and when I get all that done then it's going to be time for the kiss stuff and every time I open a drawer I find <laughs> a kiss related item and I'm like wow I forgot I had this so I need to catalog everything and make a list of everything I've got and make photos and and I just it's like you said I have stuff stashed everywhere and and the amount of frames I need to hang stuff up and it's it's unreal and i don't know if i'm going to have enough wall space when i get done with all of that <laughs> so i have a little bit of kids in every room now so which is fine it's fine so I remember when I uh, moved into my condo, I told myself that all my kiss stuff will be limited to my kiss room. And now it just spread out to everything. Um, the only thing is we're talking about displaying your stuff. I wish I could display mine. Uh, my place is way too small to house everything, you know? Um, do you find that a lot of your kiss stuff is hidden away, just collecting dust in bins? Um, it's hidden away, not necessarily collecting dust because it's all, you know, and. In, in um, I guess, what do you call those plastic bins? With yeah. The, you know, or the drawer type bins. I've got it places like that. So, so, and a lot of my posters that I don't have on the wall are rolled up in tubes. I have a whole corner full of tubes over there. Um, so, no, they're not collecting dust. Uh, I would like to eventually get it all up, but like I said, I don't know if I have enough wall space. So, time will tell. Tom will take none of us, none of us have enough wall space. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. None of us do. <laughs> um, and the frames, oh my gosh! I mean, you have to, you have to catch them on sale at Michaels or you know Amazon, and they're so you know they can be pricey. They can be pricey. Yeah, because each, well, each, each, even, even in the, the say the Walmart ones, the twenty-four by thirty-six is that's usually a, the normal poster rate. They usually like. 10 bucks, at least 10 bucks. Right. So, right. I mean, those are the, say cheaper ones, right? But still, <laughs> you know, loading up, you know, 30, right. 40, 50, 60 posters, man. <laughs> you know? I have, a, I have a lot of the, um, like the cruise posters. Um, I know we didn't get posters for every cruise, but I had a friend that had some made one for every cruise, and they're what, 11 by, were they 11 by 14 or 11 by, they're weird size. And those frames are expensive too. And then you have to you have to find them so they all look the same because yeah. it's different when they hang on the wall. They're, they're just not right. So so they all have to kind of be very similar. So anyway. So you mentioned you have um, guitars. Can you tell us something about the, the meet and greets you've experienced? I have um, I have two bases. Well, I have three bases, um, two that I bought from Jean, um, and I have the smashed guitar from the Kiss Crew 6 that I won, which was pretty cool. 
Um, I remember that. <laughs> I know that was just out of the blue. I'm like, no, there's no way. And so that was that was pretty exciting. Um, didn't they? Th sorry, didn't didn't they? Didn't they? Uh, like, I think I was walking, or is that breakfast or something? And it, I think they announced your name actually over the speaker. Yeah, through the whole cruise. And so everybody we were, knew. Rollo Brown from North Carolina wins the Smash Paul Stanley guitar. You know? See, and I, didn't, I didn't hear that because I think we were out maybe. We got off the ship early for something and we were out and I didn't hear it. So when we came back to the room, there was a message on the there was a message on the um on the phone and I actually taped it on my phone so I so what I was having. So I had it recorded on my phone. So it's kind of cool. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> um but yeah, that was that was pretty exciting. So so that's with that's these um, meet and greets, with the meet and greets, um, obviously being the band is exciting. But for you, what's what's memorable about about the uh, meet and greets? What makes it so special? Um, I think it's the the <clears throat> I think it's because you you really you know the meet and greets are short, but in that short amount of time, you pretty much um, their personality shine through so much. Um, I know I bought a piece of art a few years back and, and, um, you know, I'm an artist too. And, and when Paul, you know, I showed Paul some of my work and, um, he was just very personal and kind and he was so sweet. I mean, I was in tears and I'm not a big Paul Stan. I mean, I've never been a big Paul fan. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do love Paul, but, um, he had me in tears, you know, I mean, because of he, he signs this black piece of paper, you know, for the for the art and dedicates it to you. And and he was really he was just so sweet. And um, I think with Gene, you know, Gene is quite a character. And um, Melissa went with me when I bought my base. Um, she went with me. We were on the cruise, and um, he grabbed her. You know, she's just a little short thing, and he grabbed her and he said, "You're a spinner." And I'm like, you know, I'm, I looked at him really funny. And he's like, you know what a spinner is, right? And I'm like, um, <laughs> I think so. And then he kind of gave me the the hand motions. And, and and I'm like, okay. So, I mean, that was kind of an embarrassing moment. But but it was, it was funny. I look back on it. And it's typical gene behavior, I mean, you know. Um, and then I think with Ace, um, one of the meet and greets with him, I wore up. I had uh, Megan, Megan, make a pair of um, of pants of uh, with the lightning bolts down the side to wear for that concert. And um, I walked into the meet and greet with those pants on, and and he was just mesmerized by them. Those are nice pants. Those are really nice. And and he the whole time I was sitting there, and he was signing everything that I asked him to sign. He had his hand on my leg. He was rubbing my leg the whole time. I just love those pants. And he just kept feeling, I just love those pants. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm excited about that. So I'm glad you like them. I had them made for you. So, I mean, you know, they all, their personalities show through, you know. They, I mean, in the short amount of time you spend with them, you know a little bit about them, I feel like. So. I remember um, I did the, um, I got the Gene Simmons bass on Kiss Cruise 4, and I was waiting in his cabin, in his suite rather, um, for my turn. And I'm Shannon was there, Sophie was there. And I swear, I felt like I was part of an episode of Family Jewels. You know, so, um, Sophie taking taking up the sun and, and Shannon making fun of Gene, like like she always does, you know. And yeah, you, you felt like you're, you know, you're part of the um, of the inner circle. And I right. think that's what's uh, so so incredible about the Kiss Cruises as well. You know, right. it's the same fans that go year after year, the diehards, and you feel like you're really part of the Kiss family in almost every respect. Um, it seems like every time I'm in some kind of thing with Gene, you know, he sees me and he runs up to me and hugs me. And, you know, and anytime we have photos made, you know, he's just like um, grabs a hold to me. And I'm like, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know. You just feel like you said, you feel like you're in the inner circle there. No. So who do you find is more personable than um, in a meet and greet, Paul or Gene? Mm. They're so different. 
they really are. That's hard to that's hard to say. They're so different. I mean, you know, Gene is a cut up, and, and it maybe I would say Gene. I mean, he's a cut up, and you know, he's you know he's joking around, and he just has a way of making you feel at ease. So I I would probably say Gene probably is more, you know, um, that's not to say Paul isn't, but Gene is just Paul is more soft spoken, and he's more serious and. Um, but Jean is, Jean is more of a cut up and, and I think that makes people feel more at ease than, you know, I mean, you're nervous anyway, with, no matter how many times you've met them, you're always nervous anytime you meet them, you're going to, you're always excited and nervous and so, but yeah, definitely Jean. I have to agree on, on between the Jean and Paul, Jean is yeah. definitely more uh, personal uh, more outgoing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he knows. I think Gene. It, it's a you know it's a sales pitch too. At the same mm -hmm. time, not, not there's, there's nothing wrong with it. He's just the way he is. But I think he does give you that more kind of you know goofing off kind of yeah. way, but serious. But yeah, in the back back of his mind, he's probably thinking, you know, I make these per person comfortable, relaxed, they have a good time. They might end up buying more stuff, <laughs> right? Right, <laughs> or whatever. But, but I bet you, you I can tell. I bet you can tell he's always into some kind of shenanigans, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but I met Paul too, and Paul's been fine. Right. You know, right. like you said, he's he's just more laid back, kind of how how are you doing? Nice mm -hmm. to meet you, kind of right. that way. And, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Every they all have their different personalities. So I met Ace. Right. Ace has got his different parts. I met you know Peter. Ace Peter's definitely he has, you know Ace. Peter's very sociable. You know. Peter yeah. is like off the hook sociable. He'll talk to you forever if you get a chance. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, I mean, uh, you know, again, they all have their different personalities. They're different people. That's the whole thing. Right. right. You know? And and Bruce, Bruce, I mean, well, I know we haven't mentioned Bruce, but um, I love him. He is he is an awesome guy. And he's he's so um, I don't know, his energy just he just has a you can tell he has a beautiful heart. You know, and um, I think that's what I love about him so much is he's just genuinely a really nice guy. You know, and I've enjoyed, you know, meeting him. I think I met him on the um, um, eight, maybe, um, when they had that um, expo type set up on the cruise and had him sign some things for me. And he was really, he was really a nice guy, too. He's always so, been nice, no, no yeah. matter what's happened. He's always been, you know, awesome. I mean, he's gone to tons of expos and, and other, all kinds of things, and he's always been, you know, he's listened to everybody. He's down to earth. Yeah, I, I got to say, Bruce, I, you know, I had met Eric Carr, uh, you know, at once, twice, and he, Eric was just as funny and, you know, big Bob here. Da, 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 you know? <laughs> Sadly. Now he's, you know, I mean, they, but everybody just like you and Pask and myself, everybody has different personalities, mm -hmm. and everybody has good days and everybody has bad days. Right. You know, Absolutely. it is what it is. Yeah, they're human. So yeah. you know, we all celebrate Kiss in our own ways and in different ways. And one way that we celebrate the band is through the creation of Facebook uh, pages. So Rella, oh. you have a Facebook page, don't you? Um, I rather inherited a Facebook page. Um, it wasn't started by me. It was started by another Kiss friend. Um, he's no longer in the group, so I've taken it over. Um, I have a couple of admins with, with me that help, um, and it's a it's a smaller private group. I think we have about two hundred and sixty members, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, um, I post as as much as I can. I mean, I don't. Um, there's so many KISS pages out there. I think we're all inundated with, with history, today in history, today this, you know. I steal some of Andy's posts sometimes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, I do. I steal your posts sometimes. It's not, all good. Huh? Not, you know, not always because. I don't care. I know. I know you don't. Um, you know, I look for interesting photos. I, I get on Reddit and some of the other places and look for interesting photos and you know I keep I you know I follow Gene on Twitter and Paul and you know I just it you know I just 
anything I see interesting that I think other, you know, members might like, I put it on there. You know, it's, it's, um, and like I said, with the, with the dental, with the, with the dental office, I do their Facebook page as well. And sometimes the, sometimes the posts intermingle, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, <laughs> um, I think I posted something. Gene had his teeth whitened, um, one, one year and he was in the dental chair with his, you know, with all the, um, apparatus in his mouth. And, and I posted that on our Facebook, on our Facebook page at the office and everybody got a good kick out of that, you know, so, nice. um, <laughs> No, and I and I and I actually think there's a dentist. I don't know where the said dentist is. Um, he may be your way somewhere, Andy. Um, he's a big Kiss fan, and his office is is like a museum of oh. Kiss collectibles. So, um, huh. awesome. he might actually, be he might actually be some something someone good you guys might want to interview. So hey, we're, we're, we're this is what we're in this. This is this is. When Pask and I started talking about this whole thing, this was this was this was supposed to be about, you know, mm. different people, different parts of lives, uh, different countries. You know, we're just kind of going with the flow and we want different people because, you know, we always I have nothing wrong with any other podcast. You know, I, I don't care what you know, but it's just fun right. to have a lot of different going to try to get a lot of different people on a lot of craziness and see what happens. And stuff like that, but but I, I wanted I wanted to say this because we were talking about the merchandise and collecting and stuff. Is that I've seen a lot of posts, especially lately. I don't know what it is. It's because I don't know because of what's going on with the world and craziness and all this stuff. But a lot of people ask uh, or, or you see posts about uh, what do you do about your collections and stuff like that. I'll t I, I'll tell you right now what I was told from insurance companies wise, and this is serious now. I joke around a lot. But people say, oh, I take pictures and stuff. You should take pictures, and you also should videotape everything you have. I'm serious now. This is what I was told. Videotape everything, pictures, and put them in a couple different places. So either you have them at your house, and then you you know put them with stuff on a computer at your you know at an office somewhere, or then you put right. like tapes in safes, you know right. like you know those burn safes and stuff like that. Because right. what they do is they basically tell you. You, you you know, you say, hey, what? how much does it say? I don't know. This box, the, you know, this 40th birthday, how, how much is it? Well, it says, uh, you know, thirty two ninety nine back in the day, you know, whatever, when it came out. But but how much is it worth now? They, they don't know. They're just like, go look on eBay. That's their basically right. answers. Right. So that's the big thing to tell everybody is really, man, is, you know, videotape, take pictures as much as you can. So like Pastor was saying about, uh, you know, categorizing everything, man, I can't even imagine – to start I, I, with I, like I, need, I need to do that <laughs> and ensure stuff too. That's another big thing. You know. Oh, my insurance is replacement insurance only. And I have to prove what I have, which I do have the proof, not necessarily the pricing, but the proof. But a lot of the stuff we have is it's one of a kind. It's 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 right. signed and we're never gonna get it again. So pretty right. much it's heaven forbid if something happens, it's uh it's going to be right. a write-off. I know that's just the reality. I know. So, yeah, like so before we uh, we end the show, I want to play a a little game. Um, so you know, um, you know, we all know that um, you know the makeup that the, the the band acquired basically is a reflection um, of their personality. Um, so, in in a sense, you know, we like certain members of the band for for certain reasons and oftentimes it's because we we sort of um relate to them so i'm going to give you a name of a band member and okay. you're going to tell me how you relate to that band member or how that band member is like you so we're going to start with paul okay um i think because you know paul and i both you know with he's an artist and He's so passionate about his artwork, and I, I'm, I feel that you know I'm the same way. Um, um, sometimes when I am so stressed about other things, that's the only thing that I can you know. Even when music doesn't work, to to ease my thinking or overthinking, my artwork will because I can get lost in a painting, and hours go by and I don't realize it. And it gets me out of my head about things. So I'm I'm gonna say the art the artistry. Gene. 
Um, Gene, I'm actually looking at Gene's solo album. He's looking at me <laughs> on his face right now. Um, Gene, he has, his persona is that dark, he has that dark side and I have a little dark side and I think that's why I associate so much with him because and, and he was, you know, all the fire and the blood and everything, you know, I'm a, I'm not a girl. I'm not never been a girly girl to for say, um, I can be, but, um, but yeah, and he has that little bit of dark side that, that I feel like that I identify with, with him. Ace. Um, stars in the sky, man. <laughs> Um, I, you know, it's not unlike at any given time to see me laying in the backyard in, in the middle of the night watching the meteors in the sky. I mean, I am a big stars and moon type of person, you know, the girls at work are like, okay, what transit are we going through today? You know, and I'm just the solar system and the, the stars and, you know, it's, I think they're just as exciting as seeing that kiss curtain drop. That's that's how I identify with him. And Peter. Um maybe that's a tough one. Um uh, maybe maybe a little bit of, you know, cats are always a little standoffish at first when they meet new people. So maybe that's what you know, maybe that's what I identify with him the most because I'm a little standoffish with new people. Um, until I get to know them better and, and then I'm, you know, more trusting of people. So I would say that's probably how I identify with him. Andy, any closing comments? It's good to get a woman's point of view, loving the band. You know what I mean? It's because it's so yeah. different. It's not, you know, it's just, I love, I just love it. It's, it's just, you know, we're all different anyways, but uh, it's just different getting a woman's point of view actually being, you know, a fan and not being somebody else that said, hey, you know, like, hey, check this out. I mean, I guess we all said, somebody said to right. us, hey, check right. this out. But right. you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? Right. Well, how did, I mean, let me ask you this. Let me ask you a question now. Uh-oh. <laughs> how, as far as our answers and why we like the band, it's, is it that much different from why men like the band? Andy? I, don't, I don't know because you're a woman. I'm not a woman, so I don't no, know. No, I mean, from what I've told you of why I love the band, has is it that much of a difference in why you love the band? I mean, is it? I mean, are we really as different as you think we are? As far as yeah, I know there's a woman's point of view, but you know, I think for the majority of most Kiss fans identify with a lot of the same same things and i think that's why we all fit together and why we all um feel like we belong you know what i mean does that make sense yeah i guess well i guess i guess because because i have kim with me you know <laughs> when, when when we're out places some sometimes not a lot but sometimes people come up and say again when did you make her a fan and she like stops her feet and you should see the right. face she gets you know, right. she just gets all of a sudden she goes, I am a fan. I've been a fan since I've been a kid. You know what I mean? Right. So she, you know what I mean? She, she just sometimes, she, and I, so that's where I get my thing about asking about this, you know? Right. Because where I grew up, you know, I grew up in the next town and there were a lot of Kiss fans. Believe it or not, where when I grew up on my neighborhood, there were actually a lot of Kiss fans and a bunch of her were older than me. Right. And there were a bunch that were the same age as me in the group. And then there was a bunch younger than me. So there were through the seventies all the way until like I left there and moved on <clears throat> that there were KISS fans there. So I never got that whole, you know, I know there were girls that were KISS fans. There were guys with KISS fans, you know, younger ones, middle, all the way around. So I never got that kind of thing until later on. When somebody would say, oh, yeah, you, you made her a fan. Oh, well, well right. I, didn't, I didn't make that person a fan. I just said, hey, hey, you, you want to check out this album? I mean, yeah. come on, man. There's no way. Somebody says somebody says to you, you guys must get irritated with this, too. Somebody, oh, you know, you used to say, I, I've heard it all. We've all heard it. Oh, Kiss thinks right. and this and that. 
And then you say, well, what kind of music do you like? And they'll say, well, I like 80s hair bands. Okay, I can pull out Kiss Asylum, Kiss Crazy Nights for you, maybe, stay, you know, Hot in the Shade. Here you go. Listen to these three albums at least. Here you go. Tell me what you think of that. You know, well, I like more of the heavy metal. Okay, I'll pull like Lick It Up or I'll pull out Hot in Hell, throw it at you. Well, I right. kind of like the gr grungy kind of thing. I could, to me, man, Hot in the Hell's kind of grungy. I could throw Hot in the Hell at you and Cannibal Souls at you. Right. You know what I mean? It's, you know, oh, a disco. I like more of the disco dance stuff. Okay, I'm going to throw Dynasty at you, right. and I'm going to throw Unmasked at you. <laughs> well, I like, you know, I like musicals. Well, guess what? I can throw The Elder at you. You know, I think it's, it's, you know that's what's so great about the band in the long ways. People got this one eye, the tunnel. They have the ACDC right. tunnel when it comes down to kids. Oh, you like you like this? Uh, you know, the one eye division, the ACDC division. You know what I'm saying? Again, I know people love ACDC, but they're, you know, most of this music is one track, one way. It's worse for them. The yeah. It's so, the same. Yeah. They're the one band. And, well, yeah. going back to what you were saying about, you know, what makes us a Kiss fan, I don't see it as a woman's perspective or a man's perspective. I see it as, as a fan's perspective. You talk to any Kiss fan, man or woman, anybody from around the world, we all relate to the same thing. Um, we relate to each other's stories and experiences. Right. And right. it's not about being a man or a woman or anything else. It's about being a Kiss fan. And right. For me, that's what it's all about. That's why this is so great that you're doing this because I like to hear all the stories. You know, anybody can tell you, oh, in 1975, they were this concert and they were here on this day. But I like to hear, you know, your stories and Andy's stories and to, you know, to be able to, to relate to people as individuals and to see that we're not all as different as we think we are. We're all more, you know, we're all alike. I Me, mean, not alike, alike, but you know what I mean? I mean, it's, well, it's wait, wait. interesting. Yeah. yeah. It wait till, wait till we're like, I don't know, say, you know, we're in our fifties, right? Wait, wait till we're like in our like sixties or even seventies. And we could talk about the kiss cruises that we went on, you know, right. all three of us went on, you know, you, go, you know, we all went on number one. Right? right, the three of us were on number one, you know, stuff like that. I mean, we can, we're gonna, you know, talk about this. People that are way young, gonna be way younger than us, you know, at that point, right? We're gonna be like, Kiss one on a cruise, they did Kiss Cruises. Oh my god, that must have been sensational, crazy, and all this stuff, right. you know. So, we're gonna be like the you know, the grandfathers, right. <laughs> We're gonna be the teachers, right? We're gonna be, right. we're gonna be past well, but we're gonna be like Kiss teachers. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, Ola, thank you um, very much for uh, coming on the show. It was such a pleasure to have you here. You. It was my pleasure and an honor to be here. Ah, it's all good. We're, we're, everybody's special. When we said this too in the beginning of this program, when we were going to do this, everybody's like, oh, a special guest. No, everybody special comes on here because they have special stories. They have special goodies. They got special everything because nobody has everything and everybody wants everything. <laughs> you know, and we could, I, I can, I laugh at, you know, like I said, we can laugh at each other, but you know, I laugh at myself more than anything out of the whole stuff. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself and have a good time with this, you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> So, and to the KISS Army, thank you very much for listening, and we hope to see you again for the next installment. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.